shit. Seems like a car didn't quite get the curb. Engine is still here. So what if like the first phase of getting to know someone is realm Z, mm -hmm. where instead of like realm one, two, three, four, realm A, B, C, D, we flipped it around, kind of just had it be non-hierarchical. Mm -hmm. But let's start in realm Z. The realm Z is purely human to human somatic relationship, mm -hmm. mostly non-verbal. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what's it like? Put out your hand. Mm -hmm. So. So if, I, if you and I are just like giving and receiving weight and we're like experiencing dy mm -hmm. dynamic equilibrium and we're yeah. just hanging out, there's a set, I get a sense of your body, let's say, mm -hmm. physical sense. Yeah. We're not falling in love. We're not yeah, going to be kissing. Bit... <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how we, do you know what proprioception is? No. Proprioception um, is the proprioceptive nerves in our body are the nerves that give us the 3D map of where we are in physical space. Proprioceptive. Pro, pre, pro, pro pre, pre, o, proprioceptive. Right, or proprioception. Mm -hmm. So our proprioceptive nerve bundles are the high data flow nerve bundles. They give us 3D perception. Um, yes, so like, how is it I can do the, I can touch my fingers together? Yeah. I don't have to go, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Or like you cut your arm off and you can put a prosthetic on and still do this, yeah. that's proprioception. Okay. So we have various levels of proprioceptive intelligence based on how much we practice experiencing our capacity to be proprioceptive. The more we practice, yeah. um, and a great example of that is the greatest like ballroom dancers of the world or the greatest, um, you know, the Olympic um, gold medalists in duet ice skating, mm -hmm. they're proprioceptive dialogue is tuned up right when the guy goes huh and hucks her and she does a triple lutz yeah, right it's they've calculated that entire fucking thing mm -hmm. in real time right then yeah and either they nail it or they, like oops I'm, I'm sorry see. i had that last yeah. little push off like oh fuck that up and yeah. she crashes yeah anyway that's proper reception yeah so imagine that level of developing that dialogue to a level with someone you're just getting to know, not running sexual energy.
woke up here in San Luis Obispo in my friend's loft. Crazy loft this guy has. Oh. Oh. Tired, but I have to freaking drive to LA you now. First stop, coffee shop. Second stop, highway. It's a poor man sports car. Mm -hmm. And I've taken her up to the Angeles Crest Highway where we wanted you to go. Oh, yeah. Up the mountain. Um, and ripped her. How does the engine sound? Beyond. Like super fast and like crazy. Just silly. Like, like whistling engine kind yeah. of sound? <laughs> like, really sorry. The editing process took a long time and I grew this mustache. I know it's inconsistent and probably not the right way to make a video or present yourself on the internet. But here I am with my mustache. Quickly want to say, I met Jim earlier at that ceremony at the mushroom farm on the beach. And we reconnected in LA. He showed me around his house and Paramount Studios. He's HR of Paramount and he was telling me some funny stories, how it was to work on Mission Impossible, how Tom Cruise left his Porsche at the studios after the movie was done and never picked it up. And he showed me around his plants and showed me some of his favorite restaurants. Marketing hub. Paramount Theater. And this is all part of Paramount? Yeah, all of this is 65 acres. The building that you see with the arches there is called the Valentino Building. And Rudolph Valentino, the actor, had a tunnel that went over under the street under Melrose where he would sneak his mistresses, really? male and female, down to his apartment building that was over here. <laughs> so now it's a finance hub. And the gate that we're going to walk up to, this is called the Bronson Gate. And it's the main gate for huge celebrity events. So it's normally closed to the public. But what happens is when there's a big screening of a big movie, Tom Cruise, whatever, Mission Impossible, whatever happens, we red carpet this. And then we open the whole thing with searchlights. Have you ever met Tom Cruise? Uh, about three times. Really? He's lovely. One of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your entire life. How did you meet him? Uh, just be on the lot for the movies. Mission Impossible. We're doing Top Gun, which got postponed. Um, he feel like he was your best friend. Like you ever, like you grew up with him. Yeah. Super lovely, down to earth, really nice guy. So what happens is when this is all decked out, that's the iconic Paramount Gate. My office is right on the other side of the fountain. Um, but what happens is, have you ever seen Sunset Boulevard? Mm-hmm. Where she drives through Norma Desmond and she says, show your guy some manners. I made Paramount Studios. That's the main gate where she drives through. Oh, really? And the money shot is the main gate. And right through the gate, normally you can see the Hollywood sign. That's sort of the main gate. But the Hollywood sign is not lit up at night. Because people find it. Really? And so the, the neighbors didn't want it lit up anymore. So. Mm. 
That is crazy. That's not true. Is it true? Uh, no, totally. Yeah, they make it dark now. <laughs> because people well, used to people, climb it. Yeah, people come from all over to climb the hollow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So they so they don't want to see them climb it, or people don't climb it anymore because it's not lit up. People live well, both. People, <laughs> people live up there. They don't, it's people yeah, don't right. Like climbing the thing. <laughs> the reason this is all set up like this now, mm -hmm. um, it's because of COVID. And what happens is, for anybody who needs to come on to do production and different yep. things, they have to go through a really strict screening process. Yeah. Um, showing ID, showing that they've been tested, and then we test them again when they come in. Yeah. Down. This shrubbery. Yeah. I don't know if you can see inside of it. No, really. It's very dense. Yeah. Dense shrubbery. Dense shrubbery. <laughs> <laughs> to um, trim this. Yeah. Is ten thousand dollars. Oh my God. So once a month. Um, when it gets buds on top, we you have trim to the whole it, thing. Really? You have to trim it once a once? $10,000. Jesus yeah. Christ. And then do you see the cameras? Yeah. There are 900 cameras. Oh my God. Right now, the team that I support are watching everything we do. Yeah. They have facial recognition, and they probably recognize it's me right now. Really? That is so crazy. Have you seen the movie Minority Report? No. There's a center, um, which I'll take you to, and there's screens all over right now oh, watching the world, watching Twitter, watching Facebook, um, watching the news, watching for some event mm -hmm. that could happen. Right. Uh, shooting. So when Mission Impossible, I don't want to say six, was filming in Paris, Twitter, somebody leaked on Twitter that something happened. Yeah. It came through here first before the news media got it. And Tom Cruise is in Paris. <clears throat> Did you see Mission? Do you watch Mission Impossible? Yeah. Mm. So there's one where he's in Paris and he's in London, but he was filming in Paris when he broke his ankle. And there was a shooting. It came through here first and then they realized it and they got a hold of the authorities in Paris and got him out of there before he was involved. So this goes all the way to the cemetery. Yeah. And those are all production uh, filming uh, buses, star wagons. Oh yeah, I see him. I don't think you see him in the video. Not really, a little bit. So if you're like me behind the camera and I'm a B class star, my star wagon is like a camper van, and there's yeah. like six of us in it. Yeah. But if you're Tom Cruise, we give you a two hundred twenty-five thousand dollar one. While we're having dinner, this dude comes up to Jim and is like, oh my God, you Jim, I drove you up to that speech when you were speaking with Michelle Obama. And on the way there, you told me all about how to basically buy a house and get my business going. And can't you believe it? I actually put together your business plan and I have a house now. And he just wants to help everyone all the time. And he succeeds in doing so. It was interesting to see that kind of person living in LA and kind of maintaining the righteous, beautiful, pure heart in the midst of the capitalistic chaos of this giant city. These leaves are like as big as my arms. Look at this. Holy shit. It's a little sharp, so if you touch it, be careful. That's a huge pine cone. It's like as big as a pineapple. <laughs> if that hit you in the head, it wouldn't feel good. It's remarkable, right? It's really remarkable. I've never seen such a big one. Yeah, these are the trees that are up there. But look at here. Excuse me, don't mean to hurt you, pardon me. Excuse me. These things get really tall. These big, giant. Mm -hmm. And they have some sort of flowers here, right? Yeah, they get this big white lily type thing. Yeah, the flower, then, right? And they bloom and die. Yeah. 